sisters and brothers, I invite us to begin as we begin all things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. As we gather here today, we do so to celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant you are faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming. They may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains, quaking before you, while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away from the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. But you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yes, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, Look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine. Protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself make strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. 
that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a person traveling abroad. They leave home and place their servants in charge, each with their own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you are like me, you still haven't quite gotten accustomed to uh, the change in time. I really don't like how uh, early, it, how dark, how it gets dark so early. It's always uh, better to be in the light. As a matter of fact, I can remember uh, when I was uh, a young child, or probably maybe seventh and eighth grade, me and my friends used to love going up to the local parish there, and we would have these massive snowball fights, and there would be where all the snow had been plowed by the parking lot. And we always had a lot of fun, and of course we'd be out there, and we'd be playing, we'd be running around, and we'd be having a great, great time. But then suddenly it'd start to get dark, and the darker it got, the colder it would get, and because we had stopped moving so quickly, then we began to really kind of freeze. And what had turned out to be this great experience of everybody having a lot of fun, now we were just very anxious to get home, and I lived very close, and I'd be walking home, getting colder all the time, and you could really feel how wet you were, and just looking for that place of, of um, coming to, to warmth and to light. I can remember always getting to the back door of the house and thinking, I made it. The house would be warmly lit, it would be warm in the house, and you generally, there'd be uh, supper on the stove. The house going into that house, going into that light, was always such a place of refuge, no matter how much fun I was having with my friends, it was always a great. It was always great getting home into the warmth and into this uh, wonderful house and be surrounded by my family. As we celebrate this first Sunday of Advent, that's really what Jesus wants uh, for each and every one of us. We begin the Advent season by lighting the first of four candles, and it's kind of like that glimmering, glimmering light, glimmering light in the darkness, calling us to a place of, of peace and comfort to come in out of the dark, to come in out of the cold. And of course, as we grow closer to the celebration of Christmas, the light becomes more bright. We, so we begin to light uh, another candle each and every week. And so the lesson for us in today's gospel passage is to be watchful, to be alert not out of a sense of fear, but looking for God's peace in our lives, looking for God's love, 
looking for that place of refuge, just like I used to enjoy running home to be with my family, to be in a place of warmth and comfort, that is what God wants for each and every one of us. And so that is the first part of this season of Advent, for us to be alert and be ready to see the presence of God. And the second is that we are called to be that presence of peace to others, that we not only recognize the single candle as the light of Christ, but that we have the light of Christ within us. And so when people see us, do they feel a sense of comfort, a sense of refuge, a sense of warmth? We are called to be aware of the presence of God in our own lives, and we are called to remember that we are to be that light of Christ to those who are in need. And so as we celebrate this first Sunday of Advent, let us thank God for the gift of his love, and let us dedicate ourselves to bringing that love and that peace to all those that are in need. Faith, and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, I invite us now to bring forth our prayers and petitions. In the season of Advent, may our parish community work to make this a place of welcome for all who seek God's face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In these days of hope and anticipation, may we learn to be alert to the evidence of God's presence in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our religious leaders stand as a sign of God's care and concern in a world in need of, he of healing and wholesomeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing a spiritual desert, that our hearts will remain open to God's saving presence in our personal lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, for their recovery, especially for Megan Rhodes, Diana Webb, Paul Igleski, Antoinette Barron, Dan Martin, Marilyn Wahlberg, Mary Ahern, Fred Schneller, Gwen Henderson, John H. Heller, Jr., Marin Rudich, Matt Taylor, Ruben Jerigay, Caitlin Teese, Mackenzie Pollock, Pat Donovan, Anna Marisi, Dick Murphy, Maureen Murphy, Ginger Rugai, and all those suffering from COVID, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed loved ones, especially for Ronald Kramer, husband of Christine Donahue Kramer, and Mary Patricia Egan, that they know the joy of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we make now, especially for Melvin K. Johnson 
and deceased members of the Crott and McFadden families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Loving God, we ask you to hear the prayers of your faithful gathered wherever they may be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below Gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. I invite you now to extend a sign of peace to those that are near you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, I invite you to behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just like to take a moment to thank uh, all those who participated in the um, virtual event supporting our teachers. As, as you all know, uh, teachers in the Catholic school system have been working uh, incredibly hard to meet the needs of students who are learning both in the classroom and at home. And so I'm so grateful to all those who participated in putting last weekend's virtual event together. I know that that um, support means a great deal to our teachers. Also, as we're celebrating this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, I just again want to assure all of you of my prayers. I know this has been a difficult Thanksgiving. It's certainly not one that we've been able to celebrate in the way that we're accustomed to, the way that we would like. Uh, but through it all, we look for the presence of God in our midst, ever watchful, ever being alert to the presence of God and calling us to be the presence of peace for all those who are in need. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God descend his blessing upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.